I want to ask you if you support White House strategist Steve Bannon's uh, proposal that he is willing to raise the highest rate up to 44 percent. Is this something you support? Um, I think the Trump plan that he put out, the president put out earlier in the year, um, fits our, our preferences. I think his rates were 10, 25, and 35. That's the kind of thing that we were looking at. That's the kind of area where we have consensus. So are you saying that you would, you would probably not support 44 percent? I'm not going to comment on something I don't even know about that we will have tax increases on some people as a way of paying for tax decreases on others. No. Um, to be as clear as I can be, no. All right, that's pretty unequivocal there from uh, key players like Speaker uh, Paul Ryan, of course, Kevin Brady, the man who runs the House Ways and Means Committee that handles the tax part of this. Uh, that none, no, no, no consideration of that 44% tax on those earning $5 million dollars or more. And remember, that was advanced by Steve Bannon, what some interpreted to be a trial balloon. Uh, it could raise anywhere from 16 to 18 billion dollars. Uh, so as I've kind of joked on this show, not enough to keep Medicare going for a few days. I exaggerate that to make the point it really doesn't raise that much money, but I guess it would presumably be symbolic. Anyway, the committee uh, for responsible federal budget president, Maya McGinnis, with us right now. Maya, what did you think of if it was a trial balloon, if it was just sort of like an overture, what, what did you make of that, the 44 percent thing? Well, I think the truth is that how you offset the cost of tax reform is never a popular idea. But if you put the whole, kind of take the bigger picture of tax reform, there are a couple of ways we can do this. The first uh, truth that, that many people would like to deny, but it is a truth, is that tax cuts don't pay for themselves. They do grow the economy, but not enough to pay for themselves. How much so do the, they pay for? Is it like a, a half, you know, it's two thirds, obviously, a third? Yeah, obviously depends on what kind of tax cuts you're talking about. So if you're lowering the cost of uh, the corporate tax, for instance, the rates on corporate tax, that may promote more growth than targeted tax cuts. But maybe 20%, a fifth to a third is probably a reasonable guesstimate. Not a half. But does so that account? Okay, I've heard that. And I'm not yeah. that exact figure. I apologize. I didn't hear that. But one thing I wonder about does that take into account people who get jobs as a result of a lower tax environment and for businesses that are more uh, inclined to hire? Does it, it does. It, really? it does. So even the tax scores that we look at right now do look at some of the behavioral improvements. But if you do a more dynamic estimate of the tax reform, it looks at the changes to the overall economy. And that does reflect increases uh, in jobs and so other important things. So all that's taken into account. So if you're right, and I'll defer to you on this, I, I'd like doubts, but not on you. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, exactly. But I'm not going to dare go battle for battle here because you're far smarter. But I, I am curious as to uh, what they would do then to offset this. I mean, right. uh, the, the, so the, the, the upper tax rate was a way to address that or it, send a message that, hey, Democrats, get on board what we're planning here, right? Exactly. So that's the point, which is we would love it if tax cuts paid for themselves. They don't. We desperately do need tax reform in order to grow the economy. So how do we offset the cost? And the answers are we either raise some taxes to pay for other tax cuts, and I'll go back to that, or we cut spending, or we add it to the debt, which is the uh, easiest politically choice, and I would argue the most damaging economically, because if you just add the cost to the debt, it actually undermines the growth effect of tax reform. But they're not going to do that. I don't think they're going to offset this with spending not. cuts. Oh, on spending cuts. Well, you would think they would. This is a Republican conservative um, agenda, which would normally be let's cut spending and reform taxes. But I have seen so few signs of cutting any spending. I'm really um, sort of what shocked if we get, by how little but, movement so there is to cut any spending. So what if we get spending. just the tax cut portion of it, uh, not the 44% yeah. thing? Right. The deficit's pretty bad as it is already. The near term, they'll tell you that it's going to add to it. The longer term, despite what you're saying, the conservatives say, yeah, but it's going to add a lot more revenue down the road. What if they don't do any spending? We just get a lot, right. you know, lower taxes. Maybe not a lot, but, but lower taxes. Then what? what, what, what so the deficit, the deficit being pretty bad is, almost, is putting it pretty mildly because our debt is at near record levels. Right. The deficit is projected to grow every year. Uh, and these problems are going to get worse and worse, which are going to be a huge drag on the economy. Gotcha. If what we do is just cut taxes and don't offset the cost at all, it will decrease economic growth. And once the real scores come out, the legitimate scores come out on this, it will show it will not grow the economy enough to offset the cost in the long run. So we need to think about how to do that. There's so many options. The tax breaks in the tax code are well over a trillion, close to a trillion and a half in lost revenue a year. Just by getting rid of some of those tax breaks, 
you could actually increase the growth of your tax reform. The Wall Street Journal has an editorial on this today right, talking right. about how those tax breaks are really distortive. Yes, people love them. No, nobody wants to talk about which ones to get rid of, and there'll be fights between businesses and right, right. people who love their tax breaks. But if we really want to do something to simplify the code and grow the economy, let's do full-on tax reform, which will grow the economy, which will keep the debt under control. And what this country doesn't have right now is anything close to a sensible, comprehensive economic plan to help promote growth and increasing the standard of living. And if we just kind of go for the easy, let's cut taxes, everybody needs a political win right now, who doesn't love a tax cut? It will seem good right. in the moment, and it will do real damage to the economy. And this right now is a country that is not focusing on long-term economic priorities, but we really need to, and it's mm -hmm. in our best interest if we do. But I don't know about you. So, I like sugar highs now and then. I mean, yeah. they might be temporary. <laughs> They're good till the crash. Yeah, They're good right. till the crash. There you go. Maya, thank you very much. Have a safe thank weekend. You. Maya McGinnis. Yep.